Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Battletech, featuring the Heavy Metal Expansion. I'm so pumped with it. I, I love Battletech. I mean, I've loved tabletop Battletech for nearly 30 years now, actually, which is kind of crazy to think about. And I've loved basically every digital adaptation of Battletech and Mech Warrior and all those things that have ever come out over the years. And in particular, I have a lot of fun with this Battletech game. I've got uh, a little over 500 hours on it, played vanilla, played modded, played all kinds of things, and I'm really pumped for Heavy Metal. Cool expansion, adding tons of stuff. Uh, before we talk about this, first of all, if you're if you're new to Battletech, if you haven't played it before, if you're wondering uh, what you should get if you're picking up the title, which I do highly recommend, um, it's worth noting, the first time you play, you should play the campaign mode, which is the story, which is excellent and very, very fun to do. And for the campaign mode, you don't really need the expansions because the expansion content really kicks in sort of after you're done the campaign story, at which point you're basically playing kind of the career mode, which is sort of the sandboxy mode. Now, when you do finish your first playthrough of the campaign, I definitely recommend the expansion. They all add some pretty cool stuff. Um, all of them add some like various miscellaneous content and some new mechs and things like that. Uh, but the big draw with Flashpoint is these multi-step missions, which are really excellent and have some cool loot and some cool story. Urban Warfare adds like city landscapes, like you would be fighting inside of a city, which really changes up the, um, the gameplay. And then finally with Heavy Metal here, um, huge number of new mechs, eight new mechs in Heavy Metal, including a bunch of them that have been sort of lost to time. A long time ago, there was basically this copyright troll this back in the 80s that caused some issues with like some like anime stuff and very, various things. Anyway, it led to a bunch of classic Battletech mechs becoming what is called the Unseen because the art for them was stuck in this like copyright hell for so long. Anyway, that lawsuit was just recently finally thrown out. And so we're getting a return of some really classic battle mechs um, now with Heavy Metal, as well as a mechs that have a bunch of unique components. Uh, and I've been really excited for Heavy Metal since I saw the... Uh, the details of it over at uh, PDXCon. So let's go ahead and get started. We are running with no mods, um, although in uh, on 1.8, the new patch, mods are finally supported in game now, which is really good. Also, the 1.8 patch uh, introduced two extra mechs for free as well, just part of the uh, the, the patch um, which we've got. So we're gonna play career mode. We're gonna go new. Um, I'm gonna leave all the settings on default over here. Um, except I'm going to turn Iron Man mode off, which is normally something I do for recordings in case I have to, um, if, in case I lose a recording or something goes stupid or something like that, uh, we'll do something like that. And just, it just makes the let's play a little bit less prone to having horrible, horrible things happen. Um, but otherwise we'll keep the defaults on. Now, some of these uh, settings do make the game harder. Some of them, see, if you increase the number of parts from mech assembly, say to eight, it increases the difficulty level. This, you know, what it figures, you know, the difficulty is and increases your score multiplier, which is really it. The fact of the matter is needing more parts from mechs doesn't truly make the game harder. It mostly just stretches out the game. You're going to be playing with light and medium mechs a lot longer. You're not going to go up to heavy and assault mechs quite as quickly. And it does make it harder to get a high score, so you get a bonus to your score here. The The career mode has a scoring system built into it. You have 1,200 days, and at the end of that it gives you a score, but you can keep playing after that. And uh, I don't particularly care about, you know, the score kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to leave it at three for the sake of the, uh, the, the series here, so that we can progress a little bit more along the way. But yeah, if you do like to stretch things out, change the parts from mech assembly to like eight, and also bring the mech warrior progression to something like very slow it'll really just stretch out the game uh which is kind of cool uh the mech destruction leth lethality and stuff are kind of fun too all right isn't lethality can't people die already oh, come on when this setting is enabled mech warriors that are incapacitating co combat will always be killed okay i think there's a chance that they'll be killed right now which i kind of like the drama of that so anyway we'll go ahead and start do 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 we'll have to set up our character there's not much that to talk about with that Come on. Oh, right. I moved it off my SSD. I was like, why is it taking so long? It had to make room on my SSD, so it's back on my uh, my physical hard drive. Uh, so we're going to go and customize ourselves. We're going to be Quill, Quill 18, 18. We'll go with the He's, and um, I guess I'll go with this guy. I mean, I got a beard and sort of scruffy hair in real life. I don't look anything like him, but close enough. For my background here, it doesn't really matter. Depending on what you pick, it can have slightly different um, um, sort of choices in some of the events that can pop up. And you start with slightly different stats, but it's not a big deal. We'll go with this. It's sort of randomly generated. Families from the Federated Sons. Our family went bankrupt, and I became a Solaris Gladiator. Hey, that's a pretty sexy background. I like it. Mercenary career. Okay. 
So here we are. Unlike the story, we don't start um, on the, uh, I guess that's the um, the Leo over here. We get to start with the Argo right away. Um, we can take a look at the star map. We are starting in the, oh yes, that's right. <gasps> the new map. Oh yeah, extend coverage now with 50 more system de destinations. So yes, built in bigger maps and a bunch of extra filters. Ho, ho, ho. Especially for the store, which is kind of... I do like this. Because it's like... You can filter for different types of gear. Oh, I think they changed this from the early preview. Where you like, you'd like sort show me like anywhere that would potentially sell upgraded um, energy weapons. But still, even here, advanced electronics. So this will highlight places that might sell advanced electronics. Um, and so those are stores that are going to find more sort of plus, plus, plus weapons or... Or whatever. So that all these filters have have some value over there for different things. Um, that is quite cool. So we're going to start on Lyrton over here, former Capellan colony, uh, half challenge, agricultural, low gravity planet, moderate population. That's some research. So those traits, by the way, if you've never played this game before, those traits on the planets do have an impact because they actually affect what you might find in the store. Um, so in general, like literally what base items might be possible. In addition to that, it affects the chance of finding plus versions of weapons, which are slightly better. The snub PPC is a new weapon, I think, with um, heavy metal. I think the snub PPC has reduced range. Yeah, it's standard range instead of long range, which the PPC, we can compare. PPC, very long, max of 540 meters. The snub is only 360, although it has no minimum range, where the PPC does. Um, the, oh yeah, it's, it's a cluster. It's five shots, 15 damage each, instead of a single shot of 50. It's slightly lighter. The heat's the same. So the heat's the same, it's a little lighter. It does potentially more damage and more stability damage, um, but a shorter range. And the plus here is it's got a bonus, in this case, of bonus stability damage, which is very cool. We don't have enough money, I think, to buy anything like that right now, but it is interesting. We've also got this new coil weapon. This is crazy weird. Uh, this coil weapon does damage based on how far you've moved effectively or how many evasion pips you've built up. So it multiplies the damage based on how many evasion pips you have uh, collected when you move. So this is all new and heavy metal. Um, good, good for a shop actually to be able to showcase some of that. Now the other thing, speaking of showcasing stuff, I believe if I advance the timeline by one day, aha, there you go. For Heavy Metal, they wanted you to be able to have the option of playing with some of the new stuff right away. Um, rather than, you know, have to play a bunch and hope you get lucky with finding the right mechs or whatever. So if you advance the day with Heavy Metal, you get a pop-up here about some cargo that might have fell off a cargo ship. Um, so you can say no thanks if you want to be like a purist, not start with extra free stuff. But we're going to take the crate to be able to showcase some stuff. And what it's going to do, it's going to give us, I believe, an Assassin, which is a new mech. Oh, we got a Phoenix Hawk. Oh, when I when I did the, the test run here, I got an Assassin. We got a Phoenix Hawk instead. We're also getting an Ultra AC-5. Um, so these fire two rounds per volley. We also got one of those coil weapons, and we got some ammo for the some ammo for the AC-5, which is excellent. So yeah, the Phoenix is one of the most elegant and agile mechs around, boasting good armor and decent weapons. Sadly, its heat buildup is also noteworthy. Savvy mech warriors take advantage of this mech's jump capa uh, capability to land timely shots and then reposition to another vantage point. Okay, let's take a, take a look at what's in our mech bay. So, we did start the campaign with a Centurion. Oh, two Centurions. Interesting. A Commando. I do love the Commando quite a lot. A Firestarter. That's amazing. And a walking garbage can, uh, an urban mech. And then we get the Phoenix Hawk as well. Um, oh, that is, that is really sexy. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look at the Phoenix Hawk first, because it is brand new to this expansion. We can also show off the new view mech button, which is now built into the game. So we get the ability to sort of check things out. A couple of different camera viewpoints. View two is really cool looking. View three, view four. Um, and yeah, different camo patterns as well. You know, I kind of like, I kind of like five. Um, so yeah, so one of the big deals with Heavy Metal is all of the new mechs, as far as I know, all of the new mechs have a unique component. So historically, in the lore of Battletech, all the mechs, you know, were described as having certain quirks and things that were unique to them and various things like that. And that hasn't really been brought into the video game before. Or frankly, 
any of the video games in a, in a certain sense. Um, other than, you know, maybe the differences in hard points over here. So, you know, if something's got a lot of missile hard points, it'll feel different than, than one that doesn't have any. Um, there's that, but now, each one of these new mechs has something truly unique about it. So for the Phoenix Hawk, it has these, this vectored thrust kit. This cannot be removed. You can see it's got like a striped background. If I try to click and drag, I can't, I can't pull it off, you know, like I could with the, uh, the jump jets here. Uh, it's, just, it's just built into the mech itself, so it can't be swapped around. But this gives us an extra 10% jump distance. So the Phoenix Hawk mounts a pair of unique vectored thrust kits. They act as normal jump jets, but in addition, their specialized thrust system optimizes propulsion and control during flight. This provides superior poise for subsequent attacks, increasing damage dealt by enemy shots fired. So with the Phoenix Hawk, when we jump, we jump further. And in addition to that, we do 10% extra damage after the jump. Now we've got two of these. I don't know if they double stack. I don't know if that's 20% more or they don't stack. I don't know if it's like, if it's effectively one vector thrust kit, so I don't know if we're getting 10% more jump or 20% more jump. It's a little hard to see. Um, but yeah, we've got that going on. So that's quite cool. Normally with six jump jets, I might be tempted to pull some out of there because, uh, okay, the walking speed on the Phoenix is, is quite small. For a medium mech, 165 is not terribly speedy. Um, if I go and compare, if I look at medium mechs, um, well, actually, it's not bad. There are, the Cicada is the fastest at 210, but the Cicada is kind of trashy, especially the uh, CDA-2A. It's got a ginormous engine on it, so it's fast. I guess a lot of the medium mechs are looking at 120, 140. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not giving the, uh, the Phoenix Hawk enough credit. It actually is fairly speedy here. The amount of distance a mech can move is a little fuzzy in-game. Um, in tabletop, each hex was 30 meters and so you just you know your movement would always be multiply multiples of 30 meters and that would just basically tell you how many hexes you can move in this computer game the hexes are 24 meters but even that doesn't work exactly clearly because when your mech moves around it actually does a subset of pathfinding on a four by four meter grid which it doesn't roughly line up exactly with the hexes even though you end up going hex to hex so in the end each hex can eat somewhere some anywhere between 24 and 27 ish meters anyway all that to say that you can't really map the meters to a number of hexes you're going to move and it partially depends on what angle you're moving into things like that but still 165 is going to be a decent amount of distance um the jump distance is a little easier and straightforward to um, to keep track of, though, because it doesn't do the, the it just don't, jumps directly from one hex to another. Um, and what you need to know about the jump distance is you're going to want an even number of jump jets. The way it works out is going from, say, two jump jets to three jump jets makes you go a little bit further. Going from three to four makes you go a lot further. Going from 45, four to five, a little bit further. From five to six, much further. It's just the way the math ends up working out. You want an even number of jump jets. Um, I will say it's perfectly valid to go with zero jump jets or even just one um, because two jump jets, even though it's, you know, a, a, a bigger jump, going from zero, it's like, Going from one to two does give you a little bit more, but it's still so short, it's not worthwhile. So really, you tend to want to design your mechs around either zero, you don't care at all, maybe throw one in. You're not going to use the jump jets for true movement, but you might occasionally want to go up and down a cliff. Although it's got to be a pretty, like, steep, like, cliff, because you don't have a lot of horizontal jump movement. Um, so zero or one or four, potentially six. Six, a lot of times I find it overkill, but I think on this Phoenix Hawk, um, just because of the multiplier, we get so much bang for our, our buck, and flavor-wise, that's exactly what the Hawk is supposed to do. So, that's what we're going to do with Phoenix Hawk. We'll keep the 6 in there, that's going to be okay. I think I will do a little tweaking. It has really shit back armor, which theoretically, we're going to be constantly trying to position ourselves to not have that be a problem. But I'm tempted to get rid of the machine gun, um, because I think I would be a little scared to get into melee range with this, because if I get into melee range, although what is my base melee damage? 55, which is pretty decent actually for its weight. You get into melee, if I melee, the machine guns will fire, which is kind of nice. Um, but if I get in melee range, it makes it easier for people to get behind me, which I don't like. Oh, you have a large laser. Hold on, I thought you were packing three medium lasers. I'm actually really tempted to get rid of this large laser. This guy moves fast enough, he's going to be able to get into short range pretty easily. Oh, but I don't have any extra weapons. Hang on, let me come back out here. Let me see 10. 
what I could do is I could scrap the commando. I do like the commando as a chassis. I've always been a fan of it. But what it would do, it would give me an extra medium laser. Like, I could just rip it off or whatever. But maybe what I'll do is I'll box up the commando. I like that. I'm going to box up the commando. I mean, we're not going to use the urban mech either. But I actually don't care about these too much. I like the commando more than the urban mech, despite the fact that it's lighter. Um, let me just box up. Normally I'd scrap it, but we may have to keep a spare mech in our pocket. Let me remove the large laser and replace it with a medium laser over here. So, oh yeah, I gotta do it that way. Just clean that up a little bit. Um, that frees up a lot more heat if we're not firing the large laser, um, but also frees up four tons. The large laser does 40 damage, right? The medium laser does 25 damage. The medium laser is the thing in the game that has the greatest ratio of damage to tonnage. It's 25 damage to one ton. It's crazy sauce. Nothing else even comes close. Because the large laser is 40 damage for five tons, which means it's um, eight, eight damage per ton. Like, such a massive difference. That being said, the um, damage to heat ratio on the medium lasers is, is pretty aggressive. Um, and if you're having to put in um, heat sinks to counteract the heat, you've got to uh, calculate the weight of the heat sink to, you know, as part of your medium laser tonnage kind of thing. Because it would take you... Each heat sink does what? Three? Three heat, right? I don't have any spares. Um, so it takes you four heat sinks. So it's basically five tons. The medium laser plus the four tons of heat sinks. So then you're looking at a five to one ratio, but anyway. Um, they're still really great. But that frees up tons of tonnage for more armor. Actually, we can now max our armor. Oh, I didn't expect that. Hmm. We could put the Ultra Cannon, but I don't think that's what I want to do here. Uh... Well, maybe I'll put some heat sinks. Do I, did I have any? No, the commando didn't have any heat sinks. Hmm. Okay, what if we put the large laser back in? Remove the machine guns. Okay, that's not bad. Oh, we still have a machine gun over here. There we go. Okay, we're close to capped armor. Not, not on the legs so much, but that's not the end of the world. Um... Normally I'd spread out my jump jets so they don't all get destroyed if we lose a torso. But because my legs aren't very armored, I'm not going to move any down there. I suppose, actually, the thing to do, move into your center torso. It's your most armored spot. I mean, thematically, the jump jets on this guy are in the torsos, the left and right torsos, as opposed to the center. But this is the safest spot to not lose jump jets. It might have added a little to our work time. Yeah, adds a day and increases the work cost a little bit. You know what? I'm going to leave it in the, sh the sides. It's not that much, but thematically, it's sort of, that's where it's supposed to be, so we're going to do that. Okay, I like that. Strip out the machine gun and dramatically right. increase I'll your armor. I feel much better that way. Any ad other adjustments we want to make? I mean, keep in mind we have very few spare parts. So, here, Irby, you're going to go over there because we don't love you. Um, so, mostly it's a question of are we going to strip anything out? to increase our armor. I think on the Centurion here, it's kind of interesting. It's got maxed out arm armor and less in the torsos, um, which is kind of weird. I mean, you can use the arms as sort of shielding for the torso, but you could also just put the armor in the torso. So we got an auto cannon. Um, the ballistic weapons are kind of the weakest in, in the Battletech game here. Their damage to tonnage ratio is not fantastic. Although, um, one of the things we, you've got to consider, like when you're comparing the um, the ballistic weapon to energy weapons, energy weapons have much better damage to tonnage. Uh, they do generate a little bit of weight, so again, you need less tonnage for the heat sinks, but they also do have the um, the knockdown or stability damage, right? So the auto cannon does 60 damage and also does 20 stability damage, so it can knock people over, which is a very valuable thing. Uh, the LRMs, I think, have some of the, the better ratios. So this LRM here is five tons and can deal up to 20 stability damage. This AC-10 is 12 tons and can deal up to 20 stability damage. Um, you can do indirect fire with the RL arms, so I tend to prefer that. But here, because we don't have that many like swaps we can necessarily do, I think I'll leave the AC-10 in for now. Um, 
Ammo-wise, each one of these, um, each ton of ammo here, which is each one of these little like packs, has eight shots for the AC-10. I think eight is too low. 16 is probably a little more than we'll likely need, but it seems like it's the way to go. On the flip side here, the LRM-10, so this fires 10 missiles per, that's what the L long range missile 10. Um, and each one of these packs is 100 missiles, or 120. So right now we have 24 rounds of fire. I think we can strip off an armor pack. So we still have 12 rounds of fire with the LRM-10, which is plenty. And that gives us a lot more armor to play with. Um, this is going to be a fairly long range engagement thing. I'm not as worried about back armor. Um, but I'm a little bit worried about the fact that our torsos are tragically under armored. So let's bring this up a fair bit. Every ton gives you 80 points of armor. Um, and then bring this up, I would say. Uh, we could bring this arm down. Like, we could bring it fairly far down. Again, having some he does protect the left torso. We can bring it fairly far down. I'll keep this one maxed out to preserve the AC-10, but then... Um, there you go. 110 armor on both sides. I like that. The This ammo pack was completely unnecessary, and we've gained, well, 80 more points of armor, plus we've moved some armor around. I feel much better about the Centurion. So we're going to do that and take zero days to do as well, which is nice. Second Centurion, um, we're going to give it exactly the same treatment. Um, not that I can really remember what I did. I think I brought this down to 50. Um, and brought these to 110 each. And then put the rest in the center. Something like that. If they don't match perfectly, it's okay. The design is still sound. So neither one of these have jump jets, but that's okay. And the fire starter, love this mech. It, the fire starter is a great chassis um, for lots of different things. Um, it's gonna pack six jump jets, which see, uh, it does, uh, see, it also has 165 meters move, but it's a lighter mech, so that's a little easier. Uh, you don't jump and melee. I mean, you guess you can do death from above. I'm actually thinking with the fire starter, we might be able to. Because it doesn't, it's lacking in some armor. Um, also, this one machine gun is pretty stupid. So it's got a ton of ammo for its one machine gun. It fires five shots per. It's got 200 rounds of ammo in here. Like, what if we remove the flamer? Oh, no, it does have a second machine gun. Okay, so I mean, so it's firing 10 rounds. It's still 20 rounds worth of machine gun ammo, which still seems a little overkill. The machine guns do do decent damage. It's 15 damage per shot compared to the flamer, which does five damage, but generates a bunch of heat. Ideally, I would want all flamers here. You want a critical mass on the amount of heat, but I am tempted to throw another machine gun in there just for more damage. Uh, what's the tonnage difference as well? One ton, machine gun's half a ton, right? You know what? I think I like that. I'm going to go and put in... Huh? That's weird. Okay. I'm going to put in two machine guns. So right now the flamers, the amount of heat they generate is actually not going to be enough probably to lead to critical amounts. Which is kind of sucky, but it gives us a bunch more armor. Which I feel pretty good about. Ideally I would like to do a different design on the fire starter. Actually, let me back out here. The Urban Mech, does it have a small laser on it? It does. Urban Mech, you're uh, here, You're going to get scrap. Um, I might be able to sell you for a profit here. So it's 152 if we scrap. Let's go and see here. Let's store you, and then put you. go to the store. If I were to sell, um, selling, sell the Urby, yeah, I would get a little bit more than scrapping it. Okay, and I'm going to sell you. Trash can with legs. Sorry, I don't love you. One day we'll do an all Irby mech uh, campaign, but today is not that day. Um, so yeah, remove those two. Throw in some machine guns. Remove one of the flamers. Put in the small laser. We're going to keep the flamer just because it's an extra thing to melee with, but it does so little damage. It doesn't generate heat, which is nice. Um, if I just pulled you out, we could just get more armor. You know what? Let's do that. So I'm only using five of my six um, support weapons here, but the extra armor I think is going to do good things for us. All right. right. And if we end up picking up some more flamers at some point, uh, we'll we'll go crazy. I mean, I did have some money. Is there any? 
No, machine gun ammo. Yeah, you didn't really have anything appealing. Well, there's some cool stuff, but no. So that's everyone, right? Looked at, so we're going to wait seven days for upgraded fire starter, and then we're going to start our campaign. I think I'm fairly pleased with that. We've got a little bit of extra cash, and we can still sell the commando as well. Um, I'm going to go and unlock the repair scaffolding. I am often in my campaigns a little too aggressive on the ship upgrades. Sometimes I think I need to save up a little bit more money and be a little bit more cautious, but getting some more tech points will dramatically reduce the amount of time it takes us to repair our mechs, reducing the downtime, and I think that's going to be a pretty high value thing. So we're just going to wait for the fire starter to be done, and then we'll take our first mission. I'm fairly pleased with that. Um, I think us will have experience, but no one else. Yeah. I tend to give all my mechs the bulwark ability, or all my mech pilots the bulwark ability. Um, it's been nerfed since, you know, release, but it still seems really, really, really strong to me. So I'm kind of a big fan of that. Alternatively, well, I'm going to get it, but maybe short term. Maybe what I'll do is I'll get two pips in piloting. Oh, someone else has two pips in piloting already. Because I was going to say, where the pilot gives you the extra melee um, hit, we're going to want that on the fire starter. The, the stability threshold is really handy, though. You know what? Let me grab that for now. Okay. And we'll take our first contract. So this planet's going to be all half skulls and, and one skull missions. Should be anyway, I think. Yeah, one skull, half skull. Yep. Um, reputation is something we're kind of going to consider. So these missions for planetary government are less sexy because their, their rep isn't a thing that matters. And I would like to get my rep up with the pirates at some point, but we'll see. We'll start with a half pip mission. Assassinates are fun because the pilots, the, uh, the mechs that are being piloted for the assassination missions... Um, tend to be slightly better than everything else. So sometimes you can get a bit of a kickstart on getting some better loot. So I'm going to do that. And while early on, I do tend to like a little bit more money, generally speaking, to kickstart things, especially since the salvage isn't worth that much early on. For the assassination missions, I do want to make sure I've got two picks here. Because um, ideally, I will kill the enemy mech pilot, the assassin one, in such a way that will get some extra parts. But we'll see. Uh, so... Pilot, so we got shut in over here. We might rename some of them. We'll see how it goes. Shut in is going to pilot the fire starter. Um, and I think the Phoenix is going to be another fairly close up one. I'm going to put myself in the Phoenix Hawk, plus it's cool. And then for these guys, just uh, gunnery, gunnery, the, the two with slightly better uh, gunnery. So high tower and meteor are going to join it over here. So it's only a half skull mission. We are going to try to probably punch up. In difficulty as much as possible just to kind of you know make it a little harder a little bit more interesting and get slightly stronger loot as quickly as possible but uh, we'll start with this so um, you know what I guess I'll put a cut in here so first episode was introduction to the uh, expansion and fiddling around with mechs and second episode will be our first combat I won't necessarily be showing literally every combat I do in this campaign because I'm gonna be interested in sort of skipping forward a little in the let's play from time to time but uh, um, for now, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna record things as is. Folks, thanks for watching. Hopefully, uh, you will enjoy this series. If you're new to the channel, if you know maybe it's your first video you've watched on the channel, do make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, and the little alarm bell next to the subscribe button is good if you want to make sure to get notified when a video goes live. And uh, I'll see you next time, folks. Bye bye.